Hi, my name is Fernando Fervenza. I am nephrologist at the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. My area of interest is to conduct translational studies in patients with glomerular disease. Uh, and today I'm here to introduce you to a new study we are conducting uh, in patients with membranes and nephropathy aiming to evaluate the effect of therapy with rituximab versus uh, cyclosporin in patients with membranes nephropathy and nephrotic syndrome. Membranes nephropathy is a common uh, glomerular disease, uh, is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in Caucasian population. And, be uh, and because of um, uh, the uh, severity of nephrotic syndrome in, in patients who do not uh, go into remission, uh, there is a tendency to progress to damage and uh, resulting in stage renal disease. And 40% of those patients will need either dialysis or transplantation uh, long term. Now, the best prognostic factor for patient membrane nephropathy is, in fact, a remission of proteinuria. And as illustrated by these slides, patients who go into complete remission, uh, meaning no protein in the urine, they have an excellent long-term outcome. But even patients who have like a partial remission of proteinuria, meaning that they, the proteinuria goes to levels below 3.5 grams per 24 hours, they still do excellent long-term. But if your proteinuria remain uh, on the nephrotic range, then the outcome is very poor, with 80% of the patients really going um, to require dialysis transplantation uh, long term. I think there is um, no question that the target of therapy for patients with membrane nephropathy is re remission of proteinuria because we know that if we get rid of the proteinuria, those patients will do uh, very well long term. Now, we do have available uh, therapies for the disease. The best proven therapy for patients with membrane nephropathy is what is called the Ponticelli regimen. It's a combination of prednisone and cyclophosphamide uh, or a combination of prednisone and chlorambucil. And the studies done by Dr. Ponticelli show that patients treated with this combination have a 92% renal survival at 10 years versus 60% of the patients treated conservatively. We also can treat patients with uh, cyclosporin or tacrolimus. These medications are called calcinid inhibitors. They are very effective in inducing remission of proteinuria in patients with membrane nephropathy. As it is illustrated by uh, this study by Dr. Praga, in where patients were treated with tacrolimus, also known as Prograf, and at 18 months, there was approximately 76% of the patients who went either in complete or partial remission. It's the problem with these available therapies uh, that I illustrate in these slides is that they are not effective in 100% in in of the patients. Uh, but in addition, they are associated with uh, potential risk of severe long-term uh, toxicities uh, or, or, or associated uh, that they do not result in prolonged, meaning long-lasting remission. So they, sometimes patients may require to be on these therapies long term. The problem is illustrated, for example, by the study uh, that I previously mentioned, the Ponticelli study, that to this day remain the most well-proven therapy for patients with membrane nephropathy. But as illustrated in this slide, once the therapy is stopped and the patients are followed, up to 30% of those patients will have a relapse of the nephrotic syndrome uh, following discontinuation of therapy. And the issue is that these patients will need to be treated with another course of prednisone and cyclophosphamide. And then we go into the cumulative problem of the toxicity of cyclophosphamide as illustrated by this study in where patients with another disease, a vasculitis disease, but uh, who received a similar type of therapy with cyclophosphamide, uh, showing that uh, a cumulative dose of 36 grams or more of cyclophosphamide 
is increases the risk of malignancy, malignancy significantly. And in patient, in an average patient uh, who weighs about 90 kilos, this equals two courses of prednisone combined with cyclophosphamide. Similarly, the problem with the calcinin inhibitors, as demonstrated by uh, Dr. Prague, study that I already presented to you, is that once the medication is discontinued, the majority of those patients will have a relapse to the nephrotic syndrome, meaning that to keep those patients in remission, they will have to continue to take a calcinin inhibitor, which then increases the risk of toxicity to the kidney uh, with the long-term use of these medications. Therefore, um, we, have, um, we have been making the case that we need to find a better type of therapy for this patient when it's associated, associated with very good safety profile, but also that the effect of the therapy is long-lasting. Now, one of these uh, ideas was to target B cells. B cells are uh, part of our immune system. They, uh, uh, they live in the blood, and they are the ones who produce antibodies uh, um, and are responsible for a number of autoimmune diseases, for which member of the property is one of them. So based on this idea, we did uh, conducted a couple of studies, one with the use of rituximab, that is a, a, a molecule that targets uh, B cell uh, in the blood. Um, and these studies have been published. One of them, we used two doses of rituximab, and the other one, uh, we used four doses of rituximab. Um, the bottom line is that uh, both, uh, uh, in these both pilot studies, rituximab, uh, appear to be very effective with between 70-80% of the patients going uh, into remission uh, of proteinuria uh, with this treatment. So, and it didn't make any difference if you had two doses or four doses of, uh, of, uh, of the drug. And the effects also appear very long-lasting because of the 35 patients we treat, only a couple of them, the proteinuria relapse uh, uh, two or three years after the treatment. Right, Toximab also has side effects. However, the majority of the side effects observed in uh, multiple studies with rituximab are related to infusion reactions. Uh, patients who are B cell depleted uh, by rituximab are also at risk of infection. Uh, they may develop some flu-like symptoms. Uh, hepatitis B reactivation has occurred and therefore patients who are hepatitis B uh, positive are not uh, um, candidates for the study. And some rare viral uh, infections have also been reported with the use of rituximab. Now, since those studies were done, uh, investigators at Boston University found that 70% of the patients with membrane property, in fact, had in the circulation an antibody against a membrane that is in the podocyte, which is a very uh, fine and important uh, cell uh, in the glomeruli of, the, of, uh, of every uh, kidney. And in patients with membrane property, 70% of those patients have this antibody. So we took the opportunity with a sample of our previous studies to evaluate and in basic we found that 75% of the patients we remember the property in our two cohorts were positive for this antibody. But most important, this antibody predicted who would respond to therapy or not. In other words, if the antibody level came down, as for example in these two patients here, then proteinuria came down and the patient did very well. But if we didn't manage to get rid of the antibody, or in patients who the antibody became negative and the antibody came back, then is equal to either they didn't respond or the proteinuria came back. So this discovery is basically then uh, uh, said that this is an important target to measure in membrane nephropathy uh, because this appearance of this antibody is associated with a good clinical response. Uh, we also find the decline of the antibody preceded the, the proteinuria and that the reappearance of the body uh, it was equal to relapse of the disease. And in fact, uh, the paper that was published um, uh, uh, this year uh, got an editorial uh, 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 which really reinforced the idea that we could uh, potentially use those antibodies and monitoring these antibodies to really monitor and target therapy in those patients. 
So we are now very excited because we are uh, uh, starting a randomized control study in patients with membrane nephropathy. Uh, these patients are going to be randomized either to receive rituximab or, or cyclosporine, and we will uh, follow those patients and we will see um, if at the end uh, of the, the study uh, is the benefit of the new therapy of rituximab as good as the standard of care therapy in the United States with the use of, of cyclosporin, but more importantly, is, are the side effect profile better and, the, the, and if the if beneficial effects are long-lasting. Um, the study is multicenter, uh, uh, will be conducted at Mayo and around 15 other centers in the United States. For more information about the trial, or if you're interested in participating in the study, or if you would like to know if a center near you is participating in the study, feel, feel free to contact our study coordinators at the numbers uh, there, or visit um, our uh, Mayo Collaborative uh, Group webpage, uh, the address uh, uh, in this slide. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your uh, questions. You can also find more information about the study by accessing clinicaltrial.gov uh, at the identifier number presented at this slide. Thank you very much for your attention.